Hello and welcome to Credit Matters TV. I'm Mal Fallon and I'll be your host today. S&P recently published its outlook for the U.S. transportation sector. Joining me today is Peter Murphy. Peter is a managing director from our infrastructure team and he's also the primary author for the outlook. Pete, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Mal. Peter, first of all, what types of credits are included in the transportation sector at S&P? Okay, there are seven subsectors, totaling about 240 ratings. 80% uh, are rated A- minus or higher, and 98% are investment grade. Uh, the issuers uh, operate airports, toll roads, parking systems, transit systems, ports, and there's highway bonds funded by federal grants. So it's basically planes, trains, automobiles, and then throw in boats. Great. And then, Peter, you say that uh, the stable outlook is clouded by several issues, including the, you know, the picture for federal funding in the future. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Right. It's well known that the federal uh, deficit is very large, the federal debt is very high, and all matters of f finance at the federal level are very contentious. We've seen uh, the sequester, uh, the government shut down briefly last October. Uh, this complicates uh, funding for existing programs, let alone trying to get any new programs funded. Uh, of particular note in transportation is the Airport Improvement Program and the Garvey bonds, which are paid from federal gas taxes. And then how about the, the impact of the MAP-21 Act and the expiration later this year? Right. The, the Act uh, was extended two years ago through the end of fiscal 2014 after over a dozen extensions. I mentioned the contention in Congress. It's very difficult to renew these progr programs that are even widely supported. Every part of the country has roads. They need funding. It's not really a political issue, but it's a budget issue. So uh, coming up this year, we'll see Congress already working on uh, the preliminary stages of the act. But what happened with MAP 21 was there was a funding shortfall that needed to be made up by transfers from General Treasury, and that was subject to the sequester. Uh, at issue is the gas tax, which has not been increased in 20 years, is a cents per gallon tax. It's not indexed for inflation. So as uh, the cost of roads has increased, the tax has stayed the same. And with more fuel efficient cars, hybrid cars, and the recessionary impact of fewer miles driven, it's really left a funding shortfall as uh, the state DOTs see it. Okay. And then the report also mentions budget stress on both governments and consumers, and that having the impact of limiting revenue enhancing flexibility. Can you talk a little bit more about that? What does that mean? Sure. Uh, since the recession and slow recovery, consumer sentiment for all sorts of spending is less. Uh, that includes discretionary travel, uh, but also the will to pay higher toll rates, as an example. And the elected officials who operate uh, these transportation issuers feel that. They're loath to increase uh, rates unless absolutely necessary. So over the long run, this you may see deferrals of capital programs which could have long-term implications. But more in the immediate term, holding the line on necessary rate increases could, could affect financial margins in the short run. Okay. And then Peter, I imagine much of this is related to the slow economic recovery. Is that, is that the case? That's true. Uh, the last three years has seen an increase, very modest, in uh, transactions for airports, toll roads, that sort of thing. But uh, not even meeting the 2007 peak, which reflects severe decline in 2008 and 2009 that we're still digging out from. Um, the transportation sector is vulnerable to uh, swings in employment levels as people drive to work, income levels as people buy goods that need to be shipped from far away uh, using roads or ports, um, and consumer spending. Uh, there's a lot of discretionary spending in transportation. For instance, a toll road, unless you're going to work, you may not need to make that trip. Uh, t uh, taking uh, vacation travel by air is discretionary. These are not commutes. So there's a lot of cyclicality embedded in the demand for transportation. Right. And then we all know that the, our infrastructure needs in the U.S. are enormous. So how does that impact the credit picture? Yeah, if you think about our infrastructure, by and large, built decades ago, uh, there were different standards for safety and environment, and certainly labor and material costs were much lower back then. 
um, those projects fun were funding new opportunities and new growth that more exciting than rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. um, so the prices have gone up. The uh, base is not necessarily growing in conjunction with the cost. The American Society of Civil Engineers has estimated by 2020 about a need for a trillion dollars just in transportation infrastructure, mostly roads. Um, so with projects that large, it almost certainly is mostly debt financed, and that will increase leverage going forward. And of course, our credit ratings speak to ability to repay debt. As that increases, the challenges exist. And there's always the, uh, the chance that if prices are raised too high, demand will dissipate. Right. Well, great. Well, Peter, thanks very much for joining us today and sharing your insight. Thank you, Mel. That concludes this segment of Credit Matters TV. Thanks for joining us.